our lovely guest today. She's in the studio already, so you were very patient. So let's welcome the beautiful Miss Jean Hanner. Hi there, thank you. Hi, Angel Lady. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Well, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for asking me. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. So I'll share uh, with our audience that I first met you at a dinner party. When was that? Remember, it was it's Chris's all a blur. <laughs> it's like two years ago. Oh my gosh! More than that. It Probably. was right. You just, to, I think you had just had you just signed on with Hay House. It's all a blur. Okay, oh, okay. I'm, all, I'm in the moment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just know I've loved you for I a know. long time, so that's fine. Well, you just moved to San Diego. <laughs> okay, that's so, like four years ago. Oh, yeah. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it really was? Yeah, I know. Oh gosh, that's amazing, isn't it? Okay, that's bad, isn't it? No, it's not oh, Okay, at all. so four years ago. <laughs> I wish it was only two years ago. I know, I know, I know. Um, but, and you were just relocating to San Diego. Yeah. You have this amazing book, right? I'm going to hold this up. It's a beautiful book called The Wisdom of Your Face, right? By Jean Hanner. And I want to talk, like, I want to begin at the beginning with you because I know you just didn't wake up one day and say, I'm going to be a face reader. So a uh, part of what I like to share with our audience is I think most of us think that when they see someone like you who is, who is leading a charmed life, they think, right? They think, oh, well, you know, the stars were just all in alignment for her. Of course, and, yeah. Right? They don't realize that usually there is a story of, of transition <laughs> right? And the transition sure. was a process of letting go, right? Of mm -hmm. ideals, beliefs, a life that looked completely different. Or, you know, it had to take some courage to follow a vision, a dream, sure. right? Not everything was all in place at the very beginning. Well, it probably was. We just didn't know it. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, and there's that, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, we just have like one minute left in this segment. So uh, can you just say how old were you? when you first were called uh, to kind of embrace face reading? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know if it was quite a calling. You yeah. know, I only wish that I'd been able to discover it early on in life. It's, yeah. you know, who knew they would grow up to become a <laughs> face reader, at least so far in my life. I, I actually in, first discovered face reading in my 20s when I married into a Chinese family because oh, this lovely. is Chinese face reading, and my mother-in-law knew this stuff. And she tried to teach me face reading, and I, I thought it was abhorrent. I thought, how awful to judge someone based on their appearance. Yes. That's terrible. <laughs> um, needless to say, I had to ignore the fact that she was always right about people. <laughs> um, so it, it took me a few years to kind of come around and start to take this seriously. But Chinese face reading is actually a branch of Chinese medicine. And so as I began to study Chinese philosophy, Chinese medicine, I discovered that there was a lot more to face reading than the superstitious way that she kind of approached it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's very, now that's a great opener. <laughs> we're going to take a break and when we come back, we're going to delve into this ancient art of Chinese face reading with Jean Hanner. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. And we're back. I'm Reverend Dr. Roby Warren. You're with A Celebrated Life. And this is the beautiful Jean Hanner. <laughs> So you were sharing that you married into this Chinese family, and of course the mother-in-law, right? You've got to love your mother-in-law. Yeah. Well, and it's a very different thing within a Chinese family to be a yeah. daughter-in-law to a mother-in-law. Yeah. For a woman of her generation, mm -hmm. that was the epitome of her life to get a daughter-in-law because the daughter-in-law is supposed to serve the mother-in-law. Oh dear. And she got this poor ignorant white girl, you know, who didn't <laughs> know the rules. So she was very patient with me. Yes. <laughs> Oh, that's very sweet. So now you're exposed to this teaching, and you're you know you're starting to uh, understand some of its branches, such as acupuncture, Chinese medicine, herbal medicine. And so, how did you switch, or how did you like engulf it wasn't, yourself? Yeah, you know, I, I think that life is often you know we think we're heading in one direction for one reason and we go through a doorway and we end up on some other planet and we had no idea why but it's the actually the perfect place to be yeah. so if you're in the flow which is really what this work is all about yes. then your life unfolds without your struggle without your stress and the more we can the whole concept of this work really is the more that we can be in balance within our own lives which includes understanding who you are mm -hmm. and loving and accepting who you are then there's less stress in your system, and then you just find your perfect partner or your perfect life or the perfect job. 
yeah. So it, that was the big revelation for me. Face reading really opened up a new understanding about my own level of sensitivity, mm -hmm. how I could actually find that to be a strength rather than the challenge that I'd experienced it so far. Right. And so that's what drew me. You can't yeah. resist that. Yeah. <laughs> wow, okay. And so how long have you been doing face well, reading? Well, that was in the late 70s, so it's been a and, long time. Yeah. Yes, I'm old now, so. <laughs> Now I have wrinkles so that when I teach this stuff, you know, I can, in the beginning when I first started teaching, I didn't have many wrinkles and so I could mm -hmm. talk about anything and now I, I see the people in, you know, in the audience going, oh, she's got that wrinkle. <laughs> so it's wonderful to kind of be a model for this because yeah. there are, you know, a lot of people are so concerned about their appearance, their wrinkles, how they look and, and there's yeah. actually wrinkles you're supposed to get. There are good wrinkles that we should all develop. Well, and what about people who get plastic surgery? Yeah. Everybody's getting plastic surgery. How does that affect your life? Well, you know, in face reading, the belief is that you're born with the features that you got for a reason. Your mm -hmm. face is a map of who you are inside, right. and it's a map of your whole journey through life. And if you can learn to read this user's manual is what it really is, then you can create a life that's in alignment with that. If you make alterations to the map without understanding what you're doing, you can actually throw your system out of balance. And I've had so many people over the years who've had plastic surgery and then later learned the meaning of the wrinkle that they erased or the feature that they changed mm -hmm. and, and it actually had a wonderful meaning. Right, right. Every feature on your face has actually really affirming and positive messages for you about how you can really be yourself almost on purpose. Oh, see, now you're making me totally paranoid because I had my nose done. <laughs> So I was did. it huge with a big bump? No, I, well, I had a little bump, right? Oh, I had, so yeah, let I had me the reassure bump. you, okay. because that's one of the very few things that may have actually helped. Okay, good. Because <laughs> a bump on the nose actually makes somebody a little bit too controlling, Oh, and that can cause problems in relationships. <laughs> me? Controlling? So, no. No. So removing a bump at least gives you a window of opportunity oh, good. to let that go. Oh, oh see. So, yay. It's divine right order. <laughs> like a little deviated septum and I said well while you're in well, there you're, exactly yeah shave off that bump well and we have to consider that you know we can't judge anybody for getting plastic surgery no. of any kind because it's about their own comfort with who they are yeah. so I completely support people in making their own decisions what hurts my heart is if someone cuts their face has surgery on their face because they think that the result will make them more loved yeah. they'll be more lovable yeah because that's not the that's case, not the case. It's and it just takes out. them further away from who they really are yeah. So share with the audience, what are some of the applications of face reading? How can a developing or acquiring this knowledge support you through yeah. life? Well, how long do we have? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you have children, it helps you understand who your children really are, mm -hmm. your partner. Often we misperceive why the other person is behaving the way that they are or their needs or why they feel the way that they do. Mm -hmm. And I, I often do couples counseling with face reading where I can explain to the partner why their partner is saying this, behaving this way, and the skies open up for them because they really didn't understand where it came from in their heart of hearts. Right. So it really gives us a much more spacious place to stand with other people and for that reflection in the mirror, which I find is the most important thing. This work is the antithesis of judgment. It's actually allowing us to look at any face that walks into the room and understand who that person is, how to create rapport with them, how to make them feel loved. Right. Wonderful. Yay. Wonderful. So this would be great if you were in human resources. <laughs> oh, I have so many human right. resources people coming. Yes. Therapists, coaches, you know, face reading was actually the original counseling and coaching thousands of years ago. People went to face readers in China for help with relationships, career, life path, things like that. Wow. Sales people. Single women. Single women. You, on the, uh, for Single online women. dating. Ladies, girls, listen <laughs> Ladies. up. Get your Bohiney and Jean Hanner's <laughs> workshop. You have a workshop coming up in San Diego? Yeah, April 27th it April starts. April 27th. Yeah. And so, look, I'm going to just do this right now. Go to Jean Hanner's website, which is? Wisdomofyourface.com. Wisdomofyourface.com. Girls run, don't walk. <laughs> Jump into her workshop right here in San Diego. She's traveling all over the world. So the fact that she's teaching in San Diego in April yeah. is, trust me, it's a huge, huge gift to us because she doesn't get to be here all that often. No. She's always on the road. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, that would be great. If we, like, girls, we could go on a date and you could just, like, 
or even the online dating sites, even that tiny little fuzzy look picture, at their photo. you can look at the photo and understand if that photo matches the text, the content of what they put about who they are. Yeah. You can either be, you know, dream date or another frog. You can know right away. <laughs> oh, I think I need to be in your workshop. That's all I'm Come. saying. <laughs> Absolutely. I know, I know, totally, right? That's so beautiful. But you really also can support people in healing, right? Yeah. And, I mean, do you have some, like, case studies? Oh. I mean, any well, I mean, you want to share? you know, you think on, on the face of it that this is just kind of a superficial thing, that you can look at someone's face and understand how they will tend to think and feel and behave. Right. But really what this is about is seeing how they've gone off course in life, how they've journeyed away from who they really are, yeah. and how to return balance to their life so that their problems cure themselves. You know, in Chinese medicine, the concept is that if your body's in balance, it can heal itself. Right. And that's the, what you go to the acupuncturist, not to cause the symptom to go away, but to bring the body in balance so that it will heal itself. Mm -hmm. A lot of people call my work acupuncture for the spirit because it's that's not nice. about healing the body, it's about healing on a spirit level. Yes. And so when you can bring your life into balance, I'm trying to think very briefly of, of one example. There was one woman I worked with recently who you could see in, from the features of her face that she had a pattern of overthinking everything. Mm -hmm. She was very hard on herself. Every time she made a decision, she would start to beat herself up about it and think, oh, I shouldn't do that, I shouldn't do this. And she was keeping herself stuck in life. She was highly self-judgmental. And really, when we looked at the situation, every time she had a chance to go forward, she was stopping herself. And so what we found was with some very small and subtle shifts in her life, we allowed her to let go of that negative loop that she was always playing in her head. And she, within two weeks, she would found the job that she had been searching for for two years. Wow. So That's powerful. Yeah. So now, do you do private readings yeah. for clients? Yeah. Are you available for private readings? As much as, as I can. As can, counseling, <laughs> couples counseling. Yeah. You have these workshops, and I know you're doing lectures. So all of your events, everything's posted on your website. Yeah, it's all there. Yeah, yeah wow, you are just a gift. You are a <laughs> gift to the planet. And I Takes know, one to know one, Roby. Oh, well, I know you are, but what am I? No. <laughs> but isn't it great, though, that you're just out in the world really, like, sharing this wisdom that, I, I mean, I had never heard of it. I mean... I'd heard of it, but it was always kind of like some far off. Well, kind you're of one of the rare few. Thing. Most people have never heard right. of it, or if they yeah. have, they think it's some kind of psychic woo woo thing. And there's no, nothing wrong with psychic woo woo things. Right. But it's actually a science. It's, it's a, a science. three thousand year old science. And it's basically understanding patterns. You know, even Western science is waking up to the fact that there's patterns in nature that we can use and learn from and there's really patterns everywhere. And the Chinese were the first to discover this thousands of years ago. Yeah. So there's patterns in your face, there's patterns in your birthday that tell us really what your inner blueprint is. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you're building a house, you have a blueprint that you refer to to build the house. Yes. If you're living your life, how wonderful would it be to have access to your inner blueprint? And that's really what this is. Yeah. So powerful that you can just gently yeah. remind people of the truth of who they are to support them in uh, creating their life being in alignment with the truth of who they are yeah. and, it's, and it's really sometimes that's all it takes doesn't it it's amazing to me when I first started out I would think you know what use am I going to be to this person sure I can tell them who they really are but then right. they're going to go right back into their problems but what I saw before me was that as you speak their language because every mm -hmm. spirit has a language that it speaks in its heart of hearts and as you yeah. can speak that language to that inner spirit everything starts to soften and relax and balance returns and you know even tiny simple things um, that you can tell someone about who they are can have huge ramifications in in their everyday life absolutely pr profound right yeah. profound it can just give them that little yeah. uh, just like an acupuncture needle <laughs> well are, do you want to do some face readings sure. today okay well i think what we'll do todd if it's okay we're going to take and we're back. I'm Reverend Dr. Roby Warren. This is A Celebrated Life. And we're here with Jean Hanner, author of The Wisdom of Your Face and The Wisdom of Your Children's Faces. So are you up for doing a reading? Sure. Oh. Should we do you? <laughs> okay, if you must. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. No, I'll be curious. 
So here's the thing, you know, reading a face is kind of like putting a jigsaw puzzle together. In other words, every feature is a piece of the puzzle. We can't judge someone or know everything there is to know based on one feature. Right. It's about putting all the pieces together and then we see the whole picture of who you really are. So right. in a full face, you need to be here for an hour. Right, but right. I'm going to talk about the things that are really just kind of calling Promise. my attention on your face. Right? Right, right. And so anybody who meets you probably for the first time is drawn to this beautiful widow's peak that you have. Yeah, they used Unbelievably to call me gorgeous. Eddie. Oh, from the monsters, what I was kidding. Well, so let me tell you why that's so wonderful. Number one, they call that someone who has natural charisma and okay. magnetic charm. Oh. So, uh -huh. so it's a sign of sex appeal. In China, men would be fate, would be chasing wait, you down wait, the street. Speak into my microphone, yeah. please. It's a sign Go of to what? China. Sex appeal. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Second. And natural charisma. Okay. But it's also a sign, a very uh, strong sign of someone who has the potential to be psychic, highly intuitive. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello, yeah. yes. And when we combine it with this beautiful hair, what we're seeing is mm -hmm. someone who really shows up to charm people, but also to enlighten them, to uplift them, to lift their hearts. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of information on your face that really talks about the open heart. Mm -hmm. The Chinese would say that this is your destiny, this is your calling in life. Mm -hmm that it is about showing up to open everybody else's hearts, to kind of hold that space and, and show up vulnerable, mm -hmm. you know, to show up open to others. And an and open heart is a vulnerable heart. Yeah. And so how to stay vulnerable but also to stay safe is part of the journey for you and part of your teaching. Yes, yes. So if I had met you at any point in your life, I would probably be telling you that, you know, people are going to be looking at you. You're probably going to be famous. You're probably going to be standing up in front of people. Mm -hmm. And you have this natural ability that when you walk in the room, everybody immediately feels better. Mm -hmm. So it is this natural charm, but also this natural warmth. Okay? So how much did my mother pay you to say yeah. this? <laughs> She'll slip me the 50 That's later. Right. Okay, good. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> now, your face is also a map of your journey through life, mm -hmm. and so every feature of your face shows you your homework for a certain decade, and mm -hmm. every year of your life is actually represented by a certain place on your face, and in my book I talk about all this. But for you specifically, this year is actually a pretty momentous one. It's a time of huge change. There may be some surprises. And so it is a time of needing to kind of brace yourself that life is about to pick you up and take you to the next level. Mm -hmm. The underlying theme for where you are in, in kind of the era in your life right now is really about looking at how you may not yet feel fulfilled in some aspect of your life, mm -hmm. what you need to do to take good care of yourself, how, to mm -hmm. look at the balance of giving and receiving in your life, about if there's any issues about how you may have been overgiving and not taking as good care of yourself as you take care of everyone else. Because yes. another thing that your face talks about is this incredible ability to be the strong provider for other people, to show up and really be someone that they can lean on, which is mm -hmm. beautiful. But we need to make sure that you're well supported too. Oh, I like that very yeah. much. I would say that sounds all very accurate. Interesting. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Very, very accurate. So I can go on, but it's up to you with the time. Okay. Uh, well, we have... A, we have Let's do just about two more minutes, and then we've got, we'll okay. move on to our okay. next face reading with Mr. Zach here. So, so uh, there's a few things that I'm, I'm also seeing. You have these beautiful, strong cheeks. They're not overly strong, but they're not too weak. And cheeks stand for our ability to speak up, mm -hmm. to speak with authority, to hold some power in life. And there is a lot of, of messages. There are a lot of messages in your face about someone who can hold power. The cheeks give us the ability to give advice to other people, to coach and counsel other people. <laughs> do that really well. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes even before they've asked. <laughs> so you're in the right profession because yeah, yeah. people will want to come to you for help. If you were working in isolation in some little cubicle somewhere, you would not be happy. Oh, yeah, I would be miserable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now, your chin represents actually where you're going in the next stage of your life from here. Mm -hmm. And... That time of your life is often a time of renewed vitality, renewed purpose, renewed strength. And we mm -hmm. look at the condition of the chin to see what's coming in life. And you have a beautiful chin, which is a good thing. It talks about strong willpower, mm -hmm. strong determination, and the fact that you have not used up too much of your willpower. You're actually someone with a deep well of willpower, mm -hmm. more than most other people. But even people with a lot of it can use up too much of it when they go through tough times. That's mm -hmm. not the case with you. Yeah. That you've been able to have a, a relatively good balance in life and that you allow yourself time to replenish, time for meditation, time for your mm -hmm. spiritual side. Yeah. So good news. 
Yay, so all that prayer meditation has paid off. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, good. Well, good. Well, I know that there's a lot of things that are up this year. And so from uh, your mouth to the universe's receptive <laughs> ear, yeah, right? Exactly. And uh, to the producer of my next television show. <laughs> right. Only one? Oh, yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Sure, Steve. my That's pleasure. That's really fun. My pleasure. Yay. Well, I brought in uh, Mr. Zach. So Zach is one of my assistant producers here at Wazillo Media, Zach Lieberman. Thank you. And so I thought it would be really fun for you to <laughs> give him a face reading because he's uh -oh. such a uh -oh. little adorable. He is. Right? Who, me? <laughs> Come on, guys. Don't, don't flatter me like this. We're on air here. We're on He's air. He's so cute. Thank you. Thank he, is, you. he is cute. Yeah, cute's written all over your face. Thank you. <laughs> I try. So a few things right off the bat. When mm -hmm. we look at the slope of your forehead, interestingly enough, it talks about someone with a very innovative mind, that you can come up to, with solutions to problems that other people are like, how did he figure that out? And you may not even be able to explain it. So it's someone who can certainly have a good logical mind, but also has a strong intuitive nature. And you can just kind of, things just kind of come to you. But it slants back slightly. And so that's a sign actually of a good businessman, someone who can kind of go for it, who can be entrepreneurial. It's uh, in ancient China, it was actually called the mark of the criminal. <laughs> oh dear, <laughs> good to know. It's good not that. Know. It's also called the mark of the deal maker. And what that oh. means is it's a guy who can figure things out, who can make deals. If this doesn't work, well, there's plan B. And if plan B doesn't work, then there's plan C. That sounds about right. Yeah, sounds and so right. there's a great strength in your nature overall to kind of go through life in curves. In other words, you don't go in a straight line, bump up against an obstacle, and then get stuck. That you'll be like, OK, well, so what do we, oh, well, let's try this. And that's how you reach success. But you will have a tendency to work too hard. You will have a tendency to feel overly responsible. You take your commitments very seriously mm -hmm. and, and a bit too seriously at times. So, you know, if you agree to show up to help a friend move and you have to be there at 7 in the morning and you have to stay till it's over, if it's not over at midnight, everybody else has gone home and you're still there hauling boxes. Sounds bad. Yeah, well, that shows great integrity and that's lovely. But, uh, again, you need to make sure that there's boundaries that you don't end up feeling guilty if you have to go home because you're dead <laughs> or that you need to take time off for a meal. That, being able to say no and not feeling guilty. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, all right. Um, let's see what else here. May I ask how old you are right now? I am 24. Oh, just a baby, okay. Just a tchotchke <laughs> on the break front of life. Ah, interesting. I have wisdom beyond my years. <laughs> yes, you do. All right, well, what your face is saying is that until your mid-20s, you're actually supposed to kind of explore life a little bit and not get right down to business. And the second half of your 20s will be about getting down to business. So there may be some new vision for your future that you really decide that you want that's occurring right now, that's starting to occur to you. It might not have even shown up last year, but this is the year that it will definitely start to show up. And life is going to go in more straight lines for you until about age 30. So these next five or six years are going to be like kind of to the moon. Up and up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to hear that. And you can tell your mother that when you hit 40, she's got it made. So. You, hear, you hear that, Mom? You hear that? <laughs> You're all set. You're all set. <laughs> you can take care of her in the manner to which she wants to become accustomed. That's, uh, I, will, I will give her everything she wants. That's, That's right. the answer yeah, I'm supposed will. to give, right? Yeah. She raised and, me well. So. And I think, girls, I think he's single. Oh, ladies. <laughs> so one last thing here about Zach is that there's a very deep emotional nature that other people don't always see. It's called your hidden nature. And that means you feel things more deeply, but there's also more depth overall. And so as a partner, you can be more emotionally available than a lot of guys could be, which is wonderful. Women, again, go to China. Women will be chasing you down the street. I say, how old are you, Zach? No. <laughs> <laughs> there's no more rules. 24, 42. I could be dyslexic, right? <laughs> I can leave now if you like. <laughs> I like to give him a hard time. You guys. I know. See, I like to make him blush. Success, success. Yes. 
Well, I this is so exciting. I I for one totally want to come to your workshop in April. I would be honored to have you there. Yeah, it would be great to uh, learn these skills and this science and this knowledge. Well, and, you to... know, the thing is, a workshop is an experience. It's not a class. I often right. have people having these huge aha moments about, oh my God, that's why my husband is the way that he is, or oh no wonder I always longed to go there or do that. Right that yeah. it really opens up for you who you really are and who you came here to be and, and releases the obstacles from you kind of stepping into that power. Mm -hmm. It's so exciting. Well, let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll do one or two more readings, and then I want to talk uh, a little bit about your second book, The Wisdom of Your Children's Face, because I think parents, this could be hugely valuable to you in supporting your child in the aptitudes that they just naturally resonate at and instead of feeling like you're pushing them up against the, the flow, right? Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, upstream, right? Right. So uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, uh, we'll have more with Jean Hanner. August 15th, 19th. Hi, and we're back. This is Reverend Dr. Roby Warren on The Celebrated Life. It's very exciting to have Miss Jean Hanner in the studio with us today. And we have a new guest who's going to get a reading. This is a dear friend of mine, Miss Mary DeFranco. <laughs> so, Miss Mary, here's Miss Jean. Miss Jean, what can you tell Hi. us? Okay. Hi. Okay. Oh, what a gorgeous face. Oh, thank now, you. Now, here's the thing with face reading is that there's different personality types, mm -hmm. and we're all a mixture of different types. Some people, though, are one type rather strongly, and other people are more of a mixture. You, your face represents a very classic type which I call kind of the natural healer, the highly spiritual person, the naturally intuitive person. Mm -hmm. This has to do with a theme, actually, of a very deep emotional nature. And interestingly, of someone who may have some pretty extreme <laughs> or dramatic experiences in their lives. Mm -hmm. the, the, yeah. the pattern in Chinese philosophy that, that this deals with actually yeah. is an incredibly powerful one. It actually has to do with kind of being in touch with death or after death or extremely dramatic experiences in life. And although what we see here is someone who is lovely and sweet and adorable, there is actually a powerhouse inside of someone who is able to withstand tougher experiences than most other people could and still keep on going. There is tremendous will here. And what can happen, however, is that the challenge associated with this is that the emotion of fear may be kind of a constant companion in your life. Mm -hmm. And you may always have to be remembering to draw on your courage. You have tremendous inner courage. Mm -hmm. And whenever fear stops you, and it can kind of just paralyze you in life, that your solution is always to remember that that incredibly deep courage that you have will just keep you on going, going on even though the fear is present. Does that make sense for you? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Okay. Yeah. So, it's crazy. <laughs> what a, so the reason I'm saying this, okay, is one of the things that we see is some natural shadowing around your eyes and a very specific kind of eyes. You have beautiful eyes, and they're they're kind of this 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 is a kind of a face where if someone looks at you, they don't they're not quite sure what your ethnic background is. Exactly. You seem like an unusual person. They're kind of like drawn to you, so you're very interesting, mm -hmm. and that's very much in alignment with this. We would say with you, there's a lot going on under the surface that you may not, you may be a woman of few words, that you may not say very much. What you say is really powerful and important. But what people need to understand about you is that that's just the tip of the iceberg. And if we really knew what was going on under the surface, we would be amazed. There's incredible depth here. Hmm. Can I ask what you do for a living? Um, well, right now I'm taking care of my dad okay. and my mom, but uh, I went to culinary school. So I was, uh, that, yeah, I was a chef for a little while. Oh my God! Okay. She's also a great photographer. All yeah. right, so, this yeah. she doesn't sense. say that. Yeah. yeah, of course she doesn't say that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, there's an aspect of this nature that talks about an enormous creative drive, mm -hmm. and so it will always be very important for you to find ways to be creative, even if you're temporarily doing work that isn't very creative. And frankly, you'll be doing that work in a creative way anyhow. Yeah. But to make sure that you don't disregard your need to be creative. The Chinese yeah. would say that you're highly fertile, either in both having children, but also in producing art in the world. Yeah. And you also have a very strong level of sensitivity. And so you may find that you're sensitive to subtle energy, that you walk into a room that's empty and you don't feel comfortable, or you're next to a person and you're feeling a little strange, or 
and wondering why that no one else is feeling that. This level of sensitivity is something that you can actually manage and grow and actually develop into a strength, but often people experience that as, as a problem. And what I would say for you is that privacy is like vitamins for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so alone time on a regular basis, really important for you to kind of replenish your energy. Yeah. Uh, do you take long soaks in the tub or do anything yeah. that's just kind of really just relaxing and replenishing? Um, I like to go down to the beach and with my camera. Perfect. And so I just get lost there. Okay. And I could stay for hours. Yeah. Just <laughs> Your personality yeah. is one that loves to get kind of lost. It's mm -hmm. not about linear thinking. I imagine that you know you're not always looking at the clock. You're probably late often when you go places. That it's not yeah, about tick tock tick tock. <laughs> Because we would say people like you have flow. Yeah. And so this concept That's of funny. time is like not, it doesn't exist on the planet that you came from. <laughs> so we need to let you flow. We need to give you freedom and independence. You'll never do well in a life that has you kind of locked into a certain schedule. As much freedom as you can possibly find in life, really important for you. Wow. It's yeah. amazing. Everything is you this said. True? Oh, yeah. yeah. Everything. This stuff works. Yeah. Without even having to touch my face. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I can touch it if you want me to. <laughs> no, I thought that's what you were going to do. I you were gonna, like, Take measurements. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like I, I brought my little headband because I thought oh, I would have sweet. to put my hand up to your hair. Well, I mean, myself. if we wanted to do a full reading, yeah. I wouldn't be looking at your ears. I'd be looking at your hairline. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yay. Oh, my pleasure. Thank Exciting. You. Thank do we have, is, is Walter here? Let's bring it. Let's do. Do you have time for one more quick point? Walter's sure. a character. Walter is a fellow comrade here with a show on Wisello Media. And so I told him to jump in. Why don't you guys trade seats? Yeah. My and we're just we're going to actually do this on camera, if you will, while they're uh, changing out the microphone. Oops. Jean, um, how long is the workshop this on that's coming up in April? Is it a Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Well, it's, it's kind of a poo poo platter. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so people can come for just one day. If they want the full training, it's four days. So the first day is a Friday, and they can take just that, and they'll get tons of information. I feed people really well yeah. <laughs> in terms of information. If they want the full training, it's Friday through Monday. Okay, Friday through Monday. Yeah. That's so exciting. Let's put that mic. Oh, we got, no, sorry, we got, good. All I'm set. ready. Walter, you're hooked Whoa. up. I'm, I'm ready to go. man with face. I don't know what to expect <laughs> with this reading at all. Okay, I'm nervous. <laughs> Are you? Yeah, I'm good. more nervous about this than my own show. Because I have a face that's never been read before. Yeah, I know. I hear it's illiterate, but now I'm ready to learn more about me, so I'll be calm. We can just sit back and let him talk, actually. No, 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 no. That, that's not, okay. So here's what I would love to ask for you. Could you just for a second pull your hair back so I can see your forehead and your hairline? How's it oh, look? Oh, look, he's got a little too. Oh, interesting. So a little bit of a rebellious nature there, but also... <laughs> you can let it go now, thank okay. But also a little bit of a widow's peak, too. Not as much as Roby's, but what that She's means... The rebel. Yes, she, well, no, no, you're the rebel. Oh, okay. <laughs> But I'll be quiet. She's a good girl. Uh, it's a little bit of a rebellious nature, but also with that little bit of magnetic charm and um, a natural sex appeal. <laughs> so I could leave you guys alone, too, if you, if you want. Just did me. <laughs> Let's keep going. I like you. So what we have here is actually someone who is very good in communications, especially by voice. So I'm not surprised to see that you're doing what you're doing that we would say that there's many signs in, in your face that talk about natural charm, natural ab ability to communicate, but also almost a chameleon-like nature that, you know, whenever someone walks in the room, you adjust to who they are to make them feel comfortable rather than requiring them to figure you out. And that always makes them feel very welcome. Is that nice of me? Yeah, it's very nice That's of you. That's nice of me. <laughs> I'm excited. Keep, tell me more about how wonderful I am. Okay. Do I have any bad things in my face? No one ever has any bad things in their face. Really? Yeah. Not even the right side? Or the left side? There's one side that's mean, right? No. Really? <laughs> oh, this is nice. I feel much more calm now. Well, that's very good, you see? See how well, you Well, people that? are also terrified that we're going to find something wrong with them. And that's the whole basis of our culture, is thinking that there's something wrong with you. And in truth, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. The only thing that's wrong with you is that you think there's something wrong with you. So, so we can let that go. I can? Yes. Oh, this is nice. Yeah. You it's ladies a celebrated are not, life. This, you, so I have no more. This is great. Tell me more. Oh, okay. Well, so what we see here is a nose that has some fleshiness to us, some beautiful fleshiness here. That's because I eat a lot. And that, no, no. no. You, would, you could starve yourself. You would still have a fleshy nose and fleshy cheeks. Oh. 
what this talks about is someone who is available in relationships, who's very kind and caring, who's more of a family person than a one night stand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that's, he says. That's true. Yes. No, I have dogs. Oh, totally. Oh, my God. This is such a dog person thing. Well, I can't and, tell and, you. and I'm engaged to be married, so that makes me family ish like, right? Family ish like. I'm yes. a family on deck. No, this talks That's about right. someone who genuinely cares about other people. I do. Whose first thought is, how can I help you? What can I do for you? How can I make you comfortable? So, you know, your fiance is very lucky. Tell that person tell, that they're tell, very tell lucky. Tell the camera that. You're very lucky. <laughs> okay, give it a second. Keep going. May I ask how old you are right now? Yes, I'm 39 until Monday. Uh huh. And then I'll be 40. That's a numerically okay. speaking. In, numerically speaking, because okay. that's how they work, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So on the face, the nose represents the decade of your forties, and there's always specific homework with that. And we look at your nose to see what your homework is going to be and see what's going to be happening for you. So we're looking at your nose. What what your nose is telling us is that there's going to be a, a whole new level of success in your career in your forties. The first half of your forties it may be a slow incline, but the second half of your forties is like Shazam. And that there, there will be kind of a sense of feeling compelled to look at how you want to make sure that the work that you're doing is meaningful to you, that you're being true to yourself. You may find that there's a little bit of struggle lifelong with sacrificing your own needs to make it nice for everybody else. There's what we call, we call you sometimes the, the archetype of the perfect host. That you know, you're so concerned with how everyone else is doing that you may forget to eat yourself or forget to take care of yourself. My nose says all that? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it's it? It's a nice nose. <laughs> so you're very giving, very generous, very kind. I want as at least a, half of that to be going back to yourself as well. It'll be important for you to have a wonderful home together. It'll be important for you to have time at home, to not be driven and not be working all the time. And what your face is basically saying is that that's less likely for you than for a lot of guys who are so driven, who are such workaholics that they, they lose the family. For you, you understand the importance of family, and that's not going away. So that's one thing you don't have to worry about. Okay, that's so your good. fiance will be happy. To that's do that nice, as well, right? right? Yeah. I should have brought a picture of her nose. Yeah, because I see if our noses are compatible. <laughs> like, oh no! <laughs> that nose, there. So that, no, that nose is weak. That nose wants to punch you in the face. <laughs> I don't want that nose. No, she's got a nice nose. She got a she got a kind of nose like me, but on a woman. Oh, perfect. Yeah, but it's she's a girl. So the next, <laughs> I'm glad to know. It's a girl nose. <laughs> It's nice. <laughs> I want you also to go home and look at her earlobes. Okay, I have little ear And compare lobes. them to yours because what your earlobes talk about is close connection with family and always wanting to maintain close connection with family. My family. Or like the new family I'm going to... Whose both, family? Both. Just people's other family? You seem to have a nice family, right, Moby? I like to meet them. They seem nice. I'll be over this for dinner sometimes. That would be nice because yes. our family's kind of crazy. We try not to talk to each well, other. Well, but that can also Consciously. Be, this can also be, mean close connection with family. It's sometimes it's a positive connection. Oh. Sometimes it's a negative connection. Well, I guess it's positive that we don't speak. Well, I mean, we okay. speak. It's just... My sister said it best. If you needed us to fight, like at a, at a gang fight, they'd show up. But otherwise, we probably shouldn't really talk <laughs> up it too much because we, we want to fight. Does well, it'll work sense? both ways in your life. So family of origin, you may need to move away from in order to be happy, but there's always a bit of a connection. Okay. But what yours also talk about is the family that you establish in life will be very important to you and will mean a lot to you. I believe that. If her earlobes separate from the sides of her head, okay, it's not a bad thing. You know, it's, it's, it was hard enough for me to figure out once what color her eyes were. <laughs> Well, you may have to now I have to figure now. out what color her yes, ear looks like. But if she's got bad ears, what happens? <laughs> That's actually, that can be a very good sign because that means that she can think long term in terms of finances and money. She can think. Whereas you're more in the moment about money. Oh, I'm very in the moment. <laughs> so this is good. It's a good combination. You kind of balance each other so out. So we have family oriented noses. Yeah. I have more of a, a immediate gratification in ears. She's got a long term <laughs> ears. Perfect. That's balanced. A long and happy future. All right, anything else? That I, what about my well, lips? better just hurry up and go make some babies. Am I done? Oh, oh yeah, because then they'll look all weird, Family, right? right? Like one big ear. They're like a half Dumbo, half, uh, what's his name? Picasso. Ears. Maybe. That'd be <laughs> neat. I'm sure they'll that be would, beautiful. That'd be dynamic. Uh, is my time done? <laughs> Walter, you're so good. I like being here. I just don't I, want to take the I, whole I, show. <laughs> Because I like to hear my voice. <laughs> I think what they say in the bed, in what is it, Miss Manners, you're supposed to stand at the door and put your hands like this and go, oh, it's been so lovely having you. Thank oh. you so much for I guess coming. that's my cue to go. <laughs> you have a nice nose, too. Oh, you have a very you. knowledgeable nose. Oh, I guess. And I hope well, you're not you. Pinocchio in me about my future, because I'm real excited about it. 
No, nice lady, you. nice to meet thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Pleasure. Walter. Thanks for coming on. Don't forget to watch every Wednesday, The Celebrated Life, where life is celebrated all the time. <laughs> Many ways, by many people. It's fun. They're fun people. They know everything. My nose is amazing. Look at that nose. (laughs) Thank you. Too bad this is such a boring segment. I know. (laughs) You just never know what to expect of the celebrated life, right? This is segment four, isn't it, Todd? I'm like, I'm all confused now. But (laughs) I think we're. Yeah, I think we're wrapping up the hour. It was so much fun. We had a whole hour go by. I know, it's fast, just like that. It's like so fast. You put us together, we speed up time. I know, and we're so impressed by your (laughs) ability just to look at someone's face. But anybody can learn this. This isn't some special ability that I have. It's actually very easy and incredibly fun to learn. Well, okay, and you can go learn how to do what Miss Jean does. Go to wisdomofyourface.com. Right? right, and you can find out about all the events. You can they can sign up online yep, for your sure. workshop in April. Sign up for her workshop. I'm going to check my calendar, and if my calendar is oh. clear, you can come and I'll be there as well, and we'll all have a great time and learn this amazing wisdom of how to read faces. Uh, really quickly, let's talk about children, mm-hmm. and if parents out there, because. Here's the thing. I'm very committed to the cause of children, right? Me too. Yeah, we we support the Monarch School in San Diego, which uh, is the only homeless school for children in all of San Diego. Oh my god! Amazing, amazing organization. So um, when a little bubula chuchkala comes into the world, right? Their yeah. faces are are they malleable? Do they come in? Well, of course, the, you know the baby's face isn't complete when they're born, but actually, our faces don't get finished until our mid twenties. Wow. They continue yeah. to grow in and different features grow in. In my research for this book, I, I did a lot of research in, in child development in Western science, and what they've discovered is that the single most important predictor of your child's happiness and success in life is how much they feel recognized by you, the parent. Mm-hmm. Not how much praise you give them, not how many times you say, I love you. It's how they feel recognized. And to recognize them, you read their face to see who they really are. Right. You know, every child is different, as parents of multiple children know. And yeah. you're never quite sure why they're behaving that way or what they really need from you. And so I found it so incredibly powerful. I get so many emails from parents, but also from people who don't have children saying they read this book and it healed their childhood for them because they understood why they were treated the way that they were. So valuable, isn't it? Yeah. So important. Now, can they purchase your books on your website yep, or do they have to go to Amazon? They can find them on Amazon. They can find them everywhere. Okay. Well, Miss <laughs> Jean Hanner, you are an angel on the planet. You are supporting people and living their celebrated life. Okay. I just want to honor you and acknowledge you. Thank you. For being as courageous as you are and pursuing this beautiful, beautiful practice. Thank you for sharing your gift oh, with the world. It's my pleasure to be Will here. Will you come Thank back? You. Another show? Anytime, sure. Oh. <laughs> Reverend Dr. Roby Warren here. This has been the Celebrated Life. Thanks for tuning in. Go out and make it a great week, and we'll see you next week. Bye bye.